Stocks moving higher, not too far from those record highs as investors look ahead to Fed Chair Jay Powell's speech tomorrow. The big question for investors is whether or not that momentum can continue or whether or not we are due for a pullback. Here to discuss, we want to bring in Irene Tunkel, BCA's Research's Chief U.S. Equity Strategist. I mean, it's great to have you here on set with us. Let's talk about some of that return and momentum that we have seen within the market. Here we are this morning, not too far from those record highs. Is there reason to believe or a reason at least to be concerned that we could see a bit of a pullback here and why? Um, good morning. Well, I think it's a great question because that's exactly what everyone is thinking because just as we expected the pullback, suddenly the talks stage the comeback. So the question is whether it's sustainable. I personally think uh, that we are entering a period of heightened volatility because we almost have like a triple whammy of things. Mm -hmm. So let me think. So first of all, economic data is very mixed. So it's a pool between you know bears and bulls, soft lending, hard lending. So it introduces lots of volatility. Second thing that is happening is the Fed is bound to um, you know start easing cycle but we don't know yet by how much. Mm -hmm. So that introduces some uncertainty. And the third thing is election. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even talking about geopolitical uncertainty. Mm -hmm. So we have three things that, uh, if nothing else, introduce volatility in the market. Mm -hmm. And it appears to me that the market is very positive. It's priced for perfection. Perhaps uh, the macroeconomic deck backdrop is fine. Mm -hmm. But let's think, there are so many things that are coming up and stocks are expensive. So I would think that we will have uh, quite a bit of volatility, a little bit up, a little bit down. It's very hard to see the market making new sustainable highs. Mm -hmm. So for volatility then to be put to rest from your purview here, yeah. would it take us fully understanding or the market fully acknowledging or at least hearing from the Fed what their terminal rate on the cutting cycle would look like? Yeah, I think the market is already expecting something like 2% mm. uh, down from where we are. So the Fed has to actually surprise and deliver much more, or at least hint that it will be very aggressive in rate cutting, because otherwise you might argue that all of that has been priced in because the conversations about that have been happening for you know, weeks now. So we are still sort of trying to work out what is the trajectory, whether the Fed will be aggressive, or they will go 25 bips or 50 bips. But I think that if you think about the big picture, the rate cutting cycle is more or less priced in. Mm. So here again, you can have some negative surprises if the Fed comes across a little bit more cautious, if they utter something about how they need more confidence or um, how they want to be patient right. or maybe gradual and careful, mm -hmm. I think the market may not like that. I mean, even if we do get a cut in September, looking past tomorrow and looking ahead yeah. to next month, if it is a 25 basis point cut, to your point that much of that has already been priced in, yeah. is it likely that we will see a sell the news type of event right after that is announced? Or I guess, how should investors be thinking about that? Yeah, I've done some analysis. We at BCA have done some mm -hmm. analysis. Uh, and what it shows is that by the rumor, sell the news totally applies, applies to rate cuts. Mm -hmm. The market usually you know, is getting very excited just before the rate cut. And just when it happens, for three months, you usually have a pullback. So historically, returns have been positive. You know, the months of the first rate cut, only 30% of the time, which is very low. Mm -hmm. I think that the standard like average is 60% of all the months are positive for the S&P 500 and here you get 30. So I think it's an indication that people may be selling the news. Mm -hmm. uh, you you yeah. mentioned November. We're just a couple of months away from the election. How should investors play the markets during that key event? Well, I think that uh, heightened volatility, whatever is the cause of that heightened volatility, usually warrant some defensive positioning. Uh, so I would say that uh, it's very hard to think about, you know, defensives like boring pharma, all the pharma is going up. It's hard to think about consumer staples when you have such exciting, you know, semis, which go up a lot. But I think that it's uh, for prudent investors. First of all, of course, you still need diversification. And I would add defensives just because when volatility goes up, it goes up quickly, as we've seen, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and, you know, returns accrue, you know, fast and steady. Mm -hmm. So I think it's better to reduce volatility of your portfolio at defensives. And also, I think that next three months will be kind of difficult just because there's so much news to go, you know, coming through. After the election, if we do get, I think the best outcome would be if we have a divided Congress, we have split government, and we find out that there is no recession, so we perhaps have soft landing. Then stocks will stage an amazing, you know, comeback. Mm -hmm. But until then, it will be lots of push and pull. 
so I think that it's just prudent to be positioned, you know, defensively. I mean, what is your base case on whether or not we are going to see a recession? Are you confident in that soft landing narrative or does that real risk to the downside remain? Yeah, I'm a little bit skeptical about soft landing because if you think about it, soft landing is warm. Right. So it's intrinsically kind of a momentum state. If you go from hot to cold, you always pass warm. And you don't really stay there. Mm -hmm. The temperature keeps falling. And I think that although the data is somewhat mixed, there are multiple indications that the economy is actually cooling. Mm -hmm. And I think that what is, you know, the outstanding question, how much will it cool? Right. So I think that the you know bulls and optimists think that you know economy will cool, but perhaps nothing terrible will happen. Uh, and people who have slightly more sort of extreme views think that you know when unemployment rate starts to go up, and mm -hmm. it already has started going up, it rarely stops. Uh, and also rate cuts rarely preclude a recession. Mm -hmm. So by itself, it's not a panacea. Just like we were talking about long and variable lags when the Fed was hiking, I think there are still long and variable lags when they're easing. And when the Fed eased in 2007, we still proceeded to have a recession. Mm -hmm. So I think that what the Fed will do doesn't have an immediate effect on the trajectory of economic growth. But um, I think that you know whatever are the cycles in the economy, perhaps it will be a very shallow recession. But I do think that the economy is slowing. So then, did the Fed wait too long? Well, there's always like it's very easy to criticize people who have pretty much manage the economy. Um, everyone knows better what they are supposed to do. I think that they're trying very hard. There's certainly some concerns that again they have overstayed their welcome, just like they, you know, were kind of dismissive of uh, inflation before. I think they're trying their best. I think they're trying their best. I'm not sure that they are late, uh, simply because I think that the job market is slowing, but it is still uh, fairly strong. Mm -hmm. And even me, even we at BCA who think that we are moving towards the recession, we are not saying that we are in a recession right now. We are not saying that the job market is completely frozen. Mm -hmm. All we are saying is the trajectory is very unfavorable. Yeah. A job that not too many people envy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the responsibility of it. Irene yeah. Tunkel, thank you so much for taking the time here with My us pleasure. in the studio. Irene Tunkel, BCA Research, U.S. Equity Strategist, uh, U.S. Equity Strategy Chief Strategist. Thank you so much.